Hello everyone, this is economics class once again. In this session, I want to discuss budget receipts with you. The topic, if we explain in detail, will be very lengthy, but we want to touch the most important ones. And in fact, those things which I explain now on the board will also be the most important ones from your examination point of view. So yesterday, I mean, in the last session, we were discussing government budget or not. So in the government budget, the government plans as to where to spend money, which area to spend money, which sector to spend money. Likewise, the government, they will also have an estimation as to from where they should uh, earn or they should get the money to fund these expenditures. So today, these are some of the ways where government generates revenue. These are some of the ways where uh, government generates income in order to fund the planned expenditure. Remember, these are not generated, these are not earned yet, these are just an estimation. And therefore, budget receipts simply means government's uh, money, uh, what, what we call, we want to refer your textbook, the estimated money receipts of the government. <clears throat> the estimated money receipts of the government from all sources available will be called budget receipts. Are you all getting the point or not? The government is estimating to receive certain sum of money from all the available sources. That is called budget receipts or not. They can, they can you know, estimate the revenue receipts from from taxation or from borrowing or from uh, you know uh, from getting grants in aid from in from international countries or international organizations so and so forth when the government is estimating such money receipts from all these sources that is technically called budget receipts and and therefore these budget receipts can be classified into revenue receipts and capital receipts. It's very interesting. Governments, governments uh, estimated receipts, revenue, under revenue receipts, government estimated receipts from, I mean, government estimated receipts which neither create liabilities nor does not lead to reduction in assets will be called revenue receipts, meaning the government is estimating some revenue to be received but when they are estimating these money receipts they are not creating any liabilities no burden they are also not reducing the assets of the government so how does the government generate such revenue it can be from the proceeds of taxations you know taxation is one of the most important sources of government's revenue. The government generates a lot of income uh, through taxation. So when the government receives taxation from the people, they don't create any liability. No burden is created. At the same time, when government gets taxation from the people, they are also not reducing the assets of the government. So no creation of liabilities or burden, at the same time, no reduction of assets of the government. But they are simply, or they're just earning or generating revenue that will come under revenue receipts and therefore for one mark it refers to estimated money receipts which neither create liabilities nor lead to reduction in government assets will be called revenue receipts so i want to cite one example ces c e s s this is one very important term we came across during this pandemic in Nagaland. You aware of this or not? This is one very important word in Nagaland. And because of this, government of Nagaland is generating a lot of income. This says is called tax upon tax. Tax on tax. We know that the consumers, uh, when they buy petrol and diesel, they pay tax to the government automatically. But upon that, they are also now paying extra tax. That is called cess. These are a kind of taxation which is levied by the government for a specific purpose. 
understood. The money so collected under this taxation should be used only for the purpose for which it is collected. So government of Nagaland has decided to impose cess on petroleum products and the money so collected will be utilized during this pandemic only or not. So when government of Nagaland gets money or generates money from this cess, they are not creating any burden, any liability. At the same time, they are also not reducing any assets, clear or not. That's how the government generates revenue. It will come under revenue receipts. Then we have capital receipts. What are capital receipts? When government raises funds by creating liabilities and at the same time by reducing some of its assets, those are called capital receipts. The word capital, it should help you to understand that we are talking about money. So, okay, how does the government creates, create liabilities? by borrowing from international organizations, Asian Development Bank, World Bank, or maybe uh, IMF. So when the government borrows money from all these institutions, or sometimes the government can also borrow money from the rich people in the domestic country. So when government borrows money from all these institutions, they are raising funds, no doubt, but on the other hand, they are creating a burden. They are creating a liability or not. Likewise, sometimes the government can raise funds in order to fund the, the expenditure by reducing some of its assets. One such example is, as a central government, they give, I mean, they borrow money to the state governments, union territories. So when the government recovers all this loan amount, that means when the government borrows money to the state government, they are creating an asset. Those are their asset. But now they are recovering back all these loans from the state governments and union territories. And therefore, when they recover back, they are now reducing their assets or not. Likewise, one very important term called disinvestment. Disinvestment simply means selling a portion or whole of the public sector undertakings. Government, they also have their own production units. They also have their own share. When they sell some of this portion or when they totally sold off all these, they are creating, I mean, they are generating funds, but no doubt they are also reducing the assets of the government or not. So likewise, for one mark, when the government raise funds by either creating liabilities or reducing its assets, those will be called capital receipts. Clear or not? Now I want us to focus on revenue receipts. Revenue receipts is further classified into tax revenue and non-tax revenue or not. So what is a tax revenue? It's very simple. When the government generates revenue by taxing the people, that is simply called tax revenue. Simple as that or not, by taxing on the income and properties of the persons and companies. When the government generates revenue or income by taxing on the income and properties of the persons and companies, that will be called tax revenue, clear. Now, this tax revenue is further classified into direct tax and indirect tax. Now, in the first place, what is a direct tax? Direct, sorry, in the first place, what is a tax in general? You know, taxations are legally compulsory payment imposed by the government on the persons, I mean, imposed by the government on the income and properties of persons and companies without any benefits in return. You know, as a citizen of a country, you are liable to pay income tax, property tax to the government. In return, you don't expect any benefit. In return, you don't expect any favor from the government. <clears throat> it's a legally compulsory contribution from the individual. Get the point or not? So what is a direct tax? Direct tax is a situation when the liability to pay and the burden to pay lies on the same person. 
the tax is imposed on you and therefore you have to pay it by any means. That means liability to pay and the um, burden to pay lies on the same person. That is called direct tax. It is called indirect tax because taxation is imposed on you. Liability to pay the tax is on you, but the burden can be shifted to somebody else. That's why it is called indirect tax. Suppose I am a producer. In the production of goods and services, I normally pay tax, uh, sales tax, or maybe, you know, uh, suppose I am a production unit which produces liquor commodities. For the production and sale of liquor commodities, I pay tax to the government. That is called excise tax or not. Many people come buy from me and they enjoy their lives. Now, this excise tax, the liability is on me, but I can shift the burden to the customer or not. How am I shifting the burden? By simply raising the prices of my products. So, yes, I am the one who is paying tax to the government, but the burden is now shifted to the customers because the customers has to pay more money for the products. Simple as that. That's why it is called indirect tax. Since in your textbook, this non-tax revenue came first, we will explain this first. The explanation of direct and indirect taxes is done in detail in the uh, later part of the chapter. So if we get time, we will explain. For now, non-tax revenue. When the government raises funds from all sources, except tax revenue, except tax, that will be called non-tax revenue. Getting the point or not, when the government raises funds from all sources besides taxation, that will be called non-tax revenue. And in fact, the government earns non-tax revenue in so many forms. If you go to higher classes, you will come across so many, but they have identified seven. And in fact, we don't have to explain the, the, all the points as well. Oh, maybe the first two, three parts, and th that should suffice for, from your examination point of view. So, in the rest, as I was explaining earlier, as a central government, they borrow money to the state government. They borrow money to the union territories, or not. So, uh, what happens is, when, where is it? When the central government uh, collects this interest from the state government or from the union territory. They are generating income, but not creating any liability. They are generating revenue, but not reducing any of its assets. Why? Because they are just collecting the interest rate, but not the principal amount. Suppose the central government gives uh, one lakh to all the states for maybe 1% or 2% interest rate. So every year, the government will just collect the interest rate from the state and union territories. Simple as that. They just collect the interest, but the principal amount is still there. And so by collecting the interest rate, the government is raising fund, but they are not creating any liabilities. No burden is created. At the same time, no reduction of assets is made. Number two, Profits and dividends. As I was telling you earlier, the central government, they also have their own uh, public sector undertakings or not. Initially, you know, uh, aviation. Aviation was also under, uh, under central government, but slowly and gradually because of this investment, it has gone uh, very far. Uh, then, you know, uh, power generation. Then in many areas, uh, both the government and the private sector, they work uh, jointly, they work together. And therefore, because of all these investments, they generate profits, they generate dividends. So when the government raises funds by collecting all these profits and dividends, they are, creating, they are not creating any liabilities. At the same time, they are also not reducing any assets of the government. They are simply enjoying or collecting the profits and dividends from their investment, from their effort. Likewise, fees and fines, even though it's nominal, the government also raises funds by collecting various kinds of fees and fines from the people. When we say fines, 
you know, it's very popular in Nagaland because we are, you know, uh, in Nagamese we say kushi kushi or not. So what actually happens is you are asked to wear a mask during the time of pandemic, but you go out without the mask. You know, you will be, you will be imposed a fine. How much? I am not sure, but there's a fine. Uh, or, you know, while driving, you are supposed to wear your seatbelt, but many of us does not do that. They impose fine. Or when you don't obey traffic rules, you pay fine, so and so forth. So even though those are uh, nominal, the government also generates fund by collecting fines from the people. Fees. There are different kinds of fees. Now, especially in uh, government-run schools, uh, we collect only the admission fees. It's nominal, but we collect it. And those are also ways where the government raises funds. You go to government-run hospital, OBD, outpatient department. You have to fill up a form for filling up the form or for registration. You have to pay 10 rupees or 30 rupees. How much? I'm not sure, but you pay some amount for registration or not. Those are also collected by the government. Not only that, when you apply for a passport to go outside, you pay some minimal amount, nominal amount or not. When you want to, when you buy a plot of land, you need to have a pata, land pata or not. So what happens? You, have, you pay some nominal uh, amount of money to the government. If you want to obtain or if you want to own a gun, you need to have a license, fees or not. So these are the ways where government uh, generates fund or revenue in order to uh, do the expenditure uh, in the plan that they have made. So even though those are minimal, the government still raises funds. But what I'm trying to tell you is in the process of, you know, uh, raising funds, the government does not create any liability. The government does not reduce its assets. As cheat is also very uh, an, an important term. I'm not sure if this is applicable in today's uh, life, but a situation where if a person dies without original here, without any here, or without writing any will, his wealth is inherited by the government. That simply is called as cheat. And you know, back in the day, there were so many people who did not marry, uh, you know, they stayed alone and then they just died like that. So in those situations, it was the government who, uh, who had the right to inherit those wealth. Those situations are called as cheat. Special assessment, that's very tricky. When new development uh, is brought in in the locality, you know, like uh, construction of roads, construction of drainage, or maybe setting up of uh, um, street lights in the locality. So when these are done, slowly and gradually, the value of the properties uh, across the new development becomes higher. There was no road, road has already been brought in, now the rental fees of the houses will also rise because the road is there and people will come for a rent or not. There was no light, there was no street light, street light has been placed everywhere, now it's safer to stay in that vicinity and therefore, you know, the rent, uh, everything becomes, the prices of everything becomes higher, they get the benefit and therefore, accordingly, the government will make an assessment as to how much to charge as tax for the benefit that they give to the people in the vicinity. That situation is called special assessment. Sale of 2G, 3G, 4G, people have started talking about sale of 5G or not. These are all, you know, a license uh, for telecommunications. So when the government sells all these, they generate a lot of income. And when they, 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 when they sell all these, the government is not reducing any of their assets, the government is not creating any liability. They just, you know, get their, uh, their funds. So these are some of the ways where uh, government generate revenue. With this, I conclude my session for today. Thank you.